Hello family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, our conversation about meditation and crippling anxiety. Um, I haven't reminded anybody in a while and somebody commented on the YouTube channel who I don't know personally. Um, so in case you happen to be watching this and you don't actually know who I am, <laughs> I am not a meditation teacher and this is not meditation instruction. That caveat's probably a lot less important now that we're not actually meditating in the videos. So, but uh, I'll say it anyway. I wanted to talk today about a goofy little YouTube video that came across my um, recommendations. I, I generally enjoy Kurgzagt, Kurds, Kurzgesagt. Um, but this one was actually quite bad. Uh, it was about the, the Kardashev scale, the uh, scale of alien civilizations. And it was incredibly basic. Um, and uh, I feel like it was quite, um, I mean, I, I think that the Kardashev scale in general is quite naive. Uh, it sort of presents this hypothesis that um, the way to measure all alien civilizations would be entirely based on their capacity for extracting energy. Um, only because we seem to be the most intelligent species on this planet and we seem to be extracting more and more energy from the planet um, and eventually from the sun to further our expansion uh, as a species. And that's pretty... Um, narrow view of what evolution might look like, I think. Um, it's understandable, but they sort, of, they sort of walk through all the basic uh, ideas of the Kardashev scale and the expansions on the scale. Um, so you start with the scale of a planet and then the scale of the solar system and then the galaxy and then multiple galaxies and then maybe even the whole universe and you're sort of a god or something. Um, if you transcend a couple of these layers. And um, I think the thing that is most disconcerting about it is that um, even in a really mundane, even in a really simple case, uh, we can all easily imagine how bigger and bigger is not the only option. Um, we don't have to constantly expand, constantly explore, constantly go be doing a new thing. Um, that's sort of the, uh, the ADHD phase of a species evolution, I think, where you can't just sit still and um, enjoy the planet that you have. And uh, I think that there is a, there's, there's a good argument to be made that the left-right political spectrum is basically dead um, and that a new sort of political spectrum is emerging, this green-black uh, political spectrum, uh, which is green is this sort of down-to-earth, let's just stay here and uh, be one with nature, and black is the go explore the, the space and the stars and let's travel faster than the speed of light and figure out instantaneous communication and all of those sorts of things. Um, and I think that the green black political spectrum, um, I think that, I think that it exists or it will exist soon. Um, but I don't think that it really has this kind of binary tension that classic left, right political scales do. Um, and I don't think that these two options are mutually exclusive. So I know that a lot of people who are uh, essentially advocating for the position that I seem like I'm advocating for, the green position of like, hey, you have a pretty good planet here. Why do you need to go to Mars? Um, are actively against the idea of traveling to the moon or traveling to Mars. I am not. I actually think that going out to places where we could get some uh, convenient energy and convenient mineral resources where we're inherently not depleting those of the planet uh, is probably a good idea. So um, these two concepts are not really, uh, they're not really diametrically opposed. You can have them both 
Um, but the idea that a more advanced alien civilization uh, as this scale presents always has to be moving outward, always has to be getting bigger, always has to be expanding um, is pretty naive. And it is uh, incredibly simple to see this. Um, it takes uh, a bit more meditation than you can do at home. Uh, you would have to do some serious, by a totally isolated, silent retreat type meditation for a little while to see, oh, okay, actually, that's not the only way um, that you know consciousness can expand. It doesn't need to uh, set up new communication networks across the stars and shoot out spaceships Star Trek style to communicate um, or interact with other alien life forms. Um, and in this respect, I actually, I have another topic that I'll bring up in another video. And it's probably a little bit blasphemous, so I apologize if there are any actual Buddhists watching this um, whom I don't know and to whom I can't apologize individually. But this idea is the idea that the Buddha was an alien. <laughs> and obviously I'm not being too serious with it, but um, I'm not going to turn this YouTube channel into some sort of conspiracy theory thing. Um, but I think that it's a fun mental exercise to think about, oh, okay, if the Buddha, Gautam Buddha, right? So like um, in the mythology of Buddhas, the most recent one, if this was a real person and if this person was perfectly enlightened, um, knew all things, right? If that's a thing that you actually believe, then you kind of have to get um, to this point that the Kurzgesagt and um, Kardashev scale get to, right? So they say that um, there are all these different sizes. Uh, so as you're growing up through the solar system and as you're growing up through um, the galaxy and then multiple galaxies and you're conquering technology that lets you travel faster than the speed of light and all these magical sort of things, um, that inherently you're going to start seeing the universe in a very different way. So a uh, species that has mastered these sorts of technologies um, won't behave the way that we do. And of course, if you think that there's some sort of being that has all knowledge and is completely omniscient and um, has all the sort of you have to work your way backwards, but if a being is omniscient, then they also have like all sorts of other kind of magical powers, right? Like they can read your mind and stuff. If you believe in such a being, that's basically an alien, right? Like, um, <laughs> uh, so I, th I think that this is a little bit funny and a little bit goofy, but I also think that there's a practical aspect to this. So you don't have to believe in the Buddha. You don't have to believe in Gautam Buddha specifically, um, you don't have to believe in reincarnation or any of the other kind of um, standard Eastern philosophy uh, and by Eastern um, Indian philosophy, right? Uh, that's expanded outward. Um, you don't have to believe in any of these things. You don't have to believe in the existence of aliens or even contemplate the existence of aliens. But it, it's a fun sort of thought exercise to frame your exploration in meditation. Um, because at some point, not, uh, not during Anapan, you won't experience this during Anapan, but um, at some point in your meditation practice, you will see um, pretty clearly what your own consciousness is. And that's a, it's a difficult experience. Um, and I'm sure that whatever I can tell you about it, there are many, many levels beyond that where you can see even more clearly what your consciousness is. Um, but it's not really what you would think, right? I mean, we sort of know intellectually what our consciousness is, that it's this kind of aggregate bubble of whatever blood and meat is sloshing around in us and the electrical impulses in our brain and our nervous system and all that sort of thing. Um, but it's other things as well. Um, and all of that is fun uh, to frame in terms of 
oh, okay, if this teaching does come from a Buddha, if there is such a thing as a Buddha, then what is that? And what is enlightenment? And what is the, the end of this fairly long journey that you're setting out on uh, as an early meditator? Um, the early stages are obviously something completely different, right? We're just trying to get to sleep and have a little less anxiety. Um, but this idea that there is an end state is kind of interesting to explore uh, mentally. Um, and the, the bare bones idea that you're not simply going out and out and out and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but that there are actually really valuable things to explore internally, um, in, inside, right? <laughs> like actually inside, inside your body, um, starting with the breath. Uh, it's, it's interesting to note that um, you don't really have to fantasize about an alien civilization contacting us over the radio or landing spaceships on Earth, that you can explore something far more curious and far weirder um, than anything that your imagination can come up with simply by exploring your own breath and then eventually body sensations. Um, so I, uh, I'll leave you with that idea. I'm not sure what anyone thinks of that. You can send me a message <laughs> and tell me, I suppose. Um, I will cover the what if the Buddha was an alien um, hypothesis? I don't think it's a hypothesis. Um, goofy kind of question uh, in another video just for fun. Um, and uh, you can send me a question about that before I do that, if you like. All right, I hope everyone is having uh, a good start to their week, and I hope that you are all taking care of yourselves. I'll link to the Kurgazagt, Kurgazagt video um, at the end of this so that you can, you can watch it if you're so inclined. Um, please take 10 minutes to do Anapana um, by yourself or with your family, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.